Hello, welcome Happy back to Monday. Advice. It's Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. It it is Monday. Ugh, I would hate to hear that chant every Monday. Yeah, well, that's Sorry, good. We guys. don't do it every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> if you're driving to work, I hope you get there safe. Eyes on the road. Speed. Floor it, but eyes on the road. You yeah. should be fine. Um, and I hope everybody's hydrated. I hope your coffee hit like Ooh. extra today, you know, and like sometimes your coffee just doesn't hit. Oh. I hope that's not today for you. I All just right. had a really good coffee. I got Joe and the juice. Oh, I don't think I've ever had their coffee. Oh, really? Yeah. I had their Americano. It's really good. good. Ooh, it's really good. No coffee for me today. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think you, you could just tell when I'm not going to be able to handle it or not. And I don't think I'll be able to handle it. I'm also getting over some type of migraine right now. Mm -hmm. Just feeling buzzy in the head and just not a hundred percent. So caffeine is not going to make it any better. No, never. Well, arguably people say caffeine does help migraines, but I would rather sit with this than sit with this anxiety. Plus anxiety. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right coffee has been hitting extra hard for me lately. We found a new coffee spot yeah. down. I almost said down the road. <laughs> it's weird to call it. There are no roads in New it's York not city. A road. It's a street. street down the street at a bodega. Such good iced coffee. And so cheap. Oh yeah. Like, think three dollars yeah that's what makes it so good that's pretty cheap for new york coffee by the way i realize that may not be that cheap everywhere else really i don't I, know yeah i mean i don't know like a fancy coffee from I mean, even joan juice that was like six bucks an americano yeah that's pretty standard to me yeah well no i guess americanos are cheaper huh no i think they're more expensive than iced coffee oh espresso is more expensive than Right, coffee. you're right. And like the process to pull it, like yeah. coffee you just pour, pour, right? I don't know. Who cares? Who cares? Shut up, guys. <laughs> um last week I went on a little Sunday date and it was it was all of my planning and this Sunday my boyfriend planned something and I have a really strong feeling we're going to a Broadway show. Really? Which yeah. one? Yeah. We've been talking like, What have you been talking about? We've been talking a lot about Lion King. Oh. But we've also been talking a lot about um, Harry Potter, but he knows I've seen that one. But mm -hmm. I've said he loves Harry Potter. I've said so many times, I will for sure see it again with you. You guys, if you have not seen Harry Potter on oh, Broadway. You guys have to go. If you can, please do. It's so cool. And like, we're not big Harry Potter people. Like, we're not like diehards or anything. No. We still loved it that much. Yeah. And so to if be you're honest, a diehard, fucking run it. Yes. <laughs> and I don't really like I know the story but right. I don't know all the details and you don't yeah. need to know all the details to go to this right. it just really is a very magical show it's so it's cool so cool I wouldn't say there's a bad seat in the house either no like it's there they were right. so good at really like bringing every seat into the show it's it, it's just so good if you know we haven't seen a lot so maybe we, we can't speak too much on Broadway yet but uh from what we have seen that is a fucking show it's a show yeah so i it's either one of those two shows i don't think he would get the harry potter one knowing i've seen it before i think that'll be one where like i'll get it and You'll, i'll be like yeah you come on let's this. just go you need yeah. to see it i think it's probably gonna be lion king Ooh. if it's a broadway show i could be like hyping it up but i have a really strong feeling it's a broadway show well tomorrow's rainy right no tomorrow's 65 tomorrow's nice. and sunny oh He's not going to take you to Broadway show though. You guys well, he planned this before we knew the weather. Oh, oh, got yeah. It. Got it, got it, got it. And he, so we were on the phone. He was like, he told me we're really bad at surprises. He's like, you want to just know? You want to just know? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, tell me. And he's like, no, I'll save it. Um, but on the phone, he was like, it's a ticketed event. And he was getting the tickets mm. while we were on the phone. And he was like, no, that one's kind of tucked too far. So I know it's some kind it's of show. Seating. Yeah, seating. seating. Because not even a concert would be standing. Right. And I thought we'd been going to a lot of museums. So when he said oh. ticketed event, I was like, okay, we're going to another museum. But then he was like, no, this one's kind of tucked. So I'm like, okay, a this is a, Yeah, we've been talking about it too. I'm so excited. Oh, if so it's, like, yeah, like, yeah. Right. It's going to be so good. I've heard oh, nothing but good. Great about reviews. Their show. Like one of like the number one Broadway shows. Yeah playing and i just love the story of lion king oh, i know yeah. i'm gonna cry oh you're gonna Ooh. fall i'm so excited it's gonna, i could tell it's gonna be so like moving to all the music yeah. and like live drums and like it's gonna be 
Ooh, I hope that's one. it. I, I hope this. I'm not just I mean, like. If it's not, you guys will go. Right. Like then right. you'll make even more of a point to make it when you plan yours next Sunday. Right. Oh, I, wow, that's gonna be so fun. Yeah, it's either that or I was thinking maybe a sporting event. We've been talking about oh. going to a basketball game. <gasps> oh my god! But it so is it. I'm. I've wanted so badly to look up like everything. I know we're going at 2 p.m. Don't look I know it up. I'm not gonna look it up. Don't do it to yourself. We have the shared note, and he last week it was my shared note, and I put all the times, and he's putting all of his stuff in our shared note. So, so you're not supposed to look, right? No, he's not putting. He was like, "Should I update the note?" And I was like, "Yeah, just don't put where we're going. Just put times and stuff." Yeah. So it'll be a surprise until it's gonna be really nice out, like I said. So we're gonna be riding city bikes. The morning, we're going to go get coffee or whatever. And then we're taking city bikes to wherever we're going. I'm so like still trying to figure it out. I know. Me too. I'm Just like, so if, it's Madison, it for yourself. if it's Madison Square Garden, you could totally ride bikes there. We could also ride bikes into Times Square, which is where Broadway is. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just so excited. Yeah, the bike thing, you can argue. You could ride go anywhere. Literally anywhere. You right. can go to Harlem. <laughs> right. <laughs> you oh. ride bikes to Harlem. <laughs> It take forever. Yeah, it'll be a long trip. Tomorrow will be really nice though. Maybe I'll take myself out. Go Ooh. on a bike ride. Yeah. It's gonna ride. be so nice. Sunny? Go, go to the park. Yep. Oh, maybe I'll take a little Literally. baby stinky mom to I hope park. it still says it. I don't think this rain was predicted to be all day, but it seems like it might be. Yeah, we're recording this on Saturday and it's ugly outside right now look at 64 and literally pure sun on sunday oh. and then but then seven straight days of clouds after that oh yeah i gotta, gotta get we outside. gotta be outside yeah. all day tomorrow yeah what's the uv index Ooh, we should go tan on the oh we can't our roof is closed it, what our, our roof, roof has is been closed? closed for all of this the, they're doing scaffolding and facade reconstruction on our building and i didn't know that yeah that's how they access so th all of their equipment's up there right now oh and then they yeah oh. that's how they get onto the thing they have you know those things that go up and down the sides of buildings it's literally right out of outside of my bedroom window yeah and they're working on the probably like two to three floors above and below me and they're just up and down all day ne right next to my window it's exhausting but we saw a girl yeah, working it was so ass. cool to see she and she up there like in hustling. jeans too she's like fuck yeah i yeah. do this she's cool um uv index for tomorrow there's it's gonna be zero there's no way well 65 is still kind of cold four four <laughs> maybe if i just lather myself in bacon grease yeah i love a good eight and nine seven is like the the lowest i'll go to start tanning right so after that it's like what's the point yeah Unless it's a nice day, then it's just nice to be like out in the, in the sun. 64 though. That's, that's, that's a, a nice, that's a nice that's day. That's a nice day. It was 60 when I went bike riding in Napa and I was like, it was a nice right. day. Yeah. It was, uh, I think it was like 68 in LA when I like, wasn't wearing a jacket and I was walking around in a tank top. Yeah. We don't need jackets tomorrow for sure. <gasps> I'm oh my so God. Excited. I'm so excited. Tomorrow is just going to be great. Sunday, fun day. Sunday, fun day. Before we continue today's episode, we're going to take a quick break for today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is ZocDoc, which is a free app that allows you to search, find, and book doctors in your area. So not only does ZocDoc have like every specialty under the sun, but you can also enter your insurance and filter all of the doctors who offer your insurance, who's in network. Yeah, it's super helpful too. They have this checklist where ZocDoc will actually remind you like, hey, it's been a year since you had your your annual checkup. It's been six months since your dental cleaning and it really holds you honestly accountable to what appointment you need next. And what I love is you do everything through the app. So if for any reason you need to reschedule, you don't have to call the doctor's office it's and be best. like, hi, do you have next Wednesday? Actually, you literally just do it all through the app. You don't have to talk to anyone. It's great for introverts. <laughs> that <it> is. <laughs> the typical wait time to see a doctor is between 24 to 72 hours, but sometimes you can even score same day appointments. All the doctors on ZocDoc have patient reviews, but they also have pictures of the doctor. So if you're looking to like get your gynecologist and you want a female, you can, That's a big one. you can really suss the vibe of the doctor. Yes. And it is really important to make sure you connect with your doctors as well. Yeah. I feel like ZocDoc really came in handy when we first moved mm. to and having to like reestablish all of our doctors. It was nice to just do everything in the app. 
Again, ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Go to ZocDoc.com slash advice and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash advice. ZocDoc.com slash advice. Thanks, Thanks ZocDoc. Doc. So as you guys know, we've been watching Vanderpump mm. and we just started season four and shit's getting crazy. Shit's been crazy. Yeah. This show is just crazy. They, <laughs> this is so nuts. How they are friends the way at they all. Treat each other. The way they treat each other, the way they just fuck each other. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then like all blame each other for being bad people and cheating, but then they're all cheaters. Like it's nuts. I don't understand it but i will eat up every minute oh yeah i think that's like psychologically i think that's why people love trash reality tv it's because it's fixing a part of you that you know you'll never touch yeah it's the thrill of it it's like it's like i'll never do that but i'm indulging what would i do if i was in that situation i'm indulging in their wrongdoings right and their sins their sins (laughs) (laughs) right now they um let's see also, no spoilers. I know there's like current seasons right now. Yeah. I don't know four. anything about anything. Yeah. So please don't say anything in the comments. But um, this is what I do know as of now. Um, Jax has a new girlfriend. Her name's Brittany, I believe. And then James and Kristen are doing terribly. They actually just broke up. They He just broke up with her because he had sex with someone else. Yeah. And then went on a date with Lala and then made out with Lala the night that he broke up with Kristen. He's, he's a child. Embarrassing. So we just met Lala. Yeah. Just met Lala. Um, she started working there. What else? Oh, we haven't seen Stoss this whole season. No. So far. I don't know if we're, if she's supposed to come back. I don't, again, I don't know anything. So don't spoil. Um, Sheena's going through shit with Shay. Yeah, dude, that broke my heart. Actually. It's really sad. That was really sad. And he came home. So he like went and stayed with his parents for a few days. And then he came home and everybody's there. I'm like, yeah. that's no way to welcome home somebody who's struggling with addiction. Like, Right. And then Sheena's, cameras too. Sheena's just sh- sitting there like, oh, I just want him to like have a happy medium with his like alcohol intake. Like just have a couple drinks. And she's just <laughs> clearly not understanding how addiction no. works. Poor girl. Yeah. I, I love her though. I do. I like she's such like a she's just so Sheena yeah I think that's why I'm at a loss for words it she means well she's such like I think she's a girly girl like she's just and she's just really young right now yeah really young and just um I don't know I think she likes to live in la la land and for some reason it works for her yeah like she's able to do it and I I think I don't know out of all of them she is the only like good friend yeah she's, she's the realist yeah like, she, the only thing that she does like i'll put in quotes wrong is when one of her homies like obviously ariana and Kristen, have beef and she's over here like she still plays, kicking it with Kristen. she plays both sides for sure that would like low-key irritate me like if you and i were in that situation you're still hanging out with the person that literally like right fucked my ex or something i'd be like hey like where's your loyalty right but I will say other than that, she like, she's not out here like flirting with nobody. Like she's, no. she's pretty loyal generally. She, yeah. She's like super loyal, it's, but it's a pick your poison type of show. And I pick her cause she's she, less poisonous. Exactly. And she just gives everyone the maximum benefit of the doubt. Every benefit ever <laughs> is yeah. through Sheena. <laughs> yes. Which, you know, you can't fault people like that. Yeah. I, I yeah. relate, but again, it is a little too, it's beyond for the type of stuff that she's still remaining loyal to these people through like the Ariana and Tom thing, like that, that is kind of crazy. Right. That's a little, I don't know. Like I said, if, if we were in that situation, like I'd be like, why are you so friends with her? Are you kidding? Right. (laughs) 
what do you see in her what like why is she at your ba- your birthday knowing i'm here yeah that's crazy yeah. it's crazy but we are talking about shit that happened in 2015 so yeah it's irrelevant now it's irrelevant now. i can't wait to catch i can't up i know and like, i want to know everything going on right now i i know left out. i know everything going on and i love like watching your fresh reaction to everything yeah just because like i don't know you're uh i don't know it's cool it's cool to see what oh you can't tell me i can't tell okay. you <laughs> yeah. i know the term scandal okay i know the term do i know what it means no do i obviously know it involves tom sandoval yes right. based off the name but like i don't i that's you don't know anything. i don't know i don't know anything and you don't know like you're meeting characters and characters it's a real it's, it's a real life literally real people. you're meeting people who are introduced in these like earlier seasons and you don't know like the impact that they're gonna have yeah one came on screen we just met her and you said oh, faith yeah i don't know anything about faith all i know is she literally just started she's training right now yeah is she a hoot and a holler um she gets into some shit I could tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The second thing, Remember when she jumped she, on Tom? No, she picked him up. Yeah. <laughs> they were helping, helping her get a new and couch. She was just like saying bye. And, and he like, like picked him up. Yeah. All right, yeah. girl. Who? Who? Yeah. I couldn't imagine working there. And uh, Lisa Vanderpump just opened a new restaurant in Tahoe called a Wolf. Oh, yeah. We gotta go. Oh, my God. Do you know what like kind of food it is? Is it fancy? I think so. Did we figure out if it's north or south? I do not know. Oh, because I'm going there for a bachelorette party. You guys have to I know. go. Okay, let's wait. Look let's, I have to figure out. South. Is, north, where are you guys going? South. 18 U.S. Highway 50 state line. State line is yeah. south. Can I see a map? Oh, that's what I was oh doing. Oh, it's so it. pretty. Look at that. I wonder if it's at one of the hotels. Probably. Oh, yeah. Um, It's at Harvey's. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm going to make a res right now. You have to. I'm, oh my god, I'm so <laughs> jealous. Ooh, my mom's gonna love that. Oh, your mom's going. Yeah. Elements of every part of this venue will tie into the wolf, a highly intelligent and complex animal that is bold, strong, playful, mischievous, vicious, caring, and devoted to family. Did you see what wow. Lisa posted recently? No, I don't follow her. I don't either. I just like I'll be looking at her. Actually, I'm gonna follow her. She. Oh, it's a picture <laughs> of like a wolf on a body with like a business suit and the caption is where and who is this guy i need him uh, and then this one her photoshopped and talking to a wolf take a peek at the beginning of at wolf like this is so bad who's yeah, running her who's, instagram yeah who's doing this also there's a new show i think called pump rules or is that what it's called something like that it's a villa and she's hiring a staff to like run this like a state. It looks like what? I might be getting this wrong. God, don't kill me. Um, but it's like a vill, like a uh, like a mansion. Okay. And they they're the staff of the house, and people come and like it's not even a house; it's a mansion. Oh, but it's is it like? But sh- it's like another like an Airbnb interim. thing. I think so. I think people can come and like rent out this for you know maybe weddings or whatever. But okay. They run like they're they work on an estate rather than a restaurant. Got it. Okay. Okay. It looks good. We should start it. Yeah, I'm down. Um, there's also another spinoff. What's it? Don't I, don't I can't look know what into it's it. No. I, can I even? You know? can, it's called the Valley. Oh, the Valley. Yeah, but don't look it up. <laughs> <laughs> what year? Uh, I think this summer. That like it's this summer. Oh, it's new. Yeah, it hasn't come out yet. Oh, I, it's probably this summer or fall or whatever. Oh, it's yeah. new. I can't know who's in it. No fuck all right let's stop talking about it okay <laughs> just don't look up shit okay you know what? i don't want you to be looking up new shows and then that come up and then you see shit i'm i don't i don't even look up their instagrams because okay. i don't even want to know who they're with right now like i'm staying you're just a little baby yes yeah, baby um i think i might need to start watching faster yes i think you're just you're too well, in it well also, i'm also waiting for you but since you know like do you mind if i just yeah yeah but like we watch a lot. But at like night, the other, I'm oh, fiending, dude. You, you watch I at have night. a TV in my room. Just now. tell me when you watch at night, and I'll just put it on. Okay. Yeah. Just so you can like stay refreshed of what's going on. Yeah. Because you understand I'm, for the most part. Yeah, I know all the points, but it's I like to see like you know. Okay, then I'm gonna start watching at night. Yeah. Just tell me when so that I know. I'm to gonna like, watch after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching tonight and tomorrow. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll oh, watch on my phone on a city bike. Yeah. Go to the park. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> Watch on my phone or bring my laptop or something. Yeah. Oh, my leg's really itchy. I think I'm just heck of dry. Yeah. You need some lotion. I put on lotion, dude, and it just doesn't soak in. Are you still doing it consistently? Every day. Huh. Yeah. Maybe it's the weather. Yeah. I also take really hot showers. Oh. I know that scorches your skin. Yeah. Get one of those shower moisturizers. Wet, the wet skin. The wet one. Jergens one. Yeah. Wet ones. Wet ones. <laughs> wet wipes. I used to use that in uh, high school. Let's try it. There's probably other brand, like good brands out there now. The only reason I don't love it is because, so afterwards you have to pat to dry. And then my towel is dirty to me now. Whereas usually if I'm just drying myself with my towel, I'll, oh. I, I have like four But now that uses. there's product on it. It's dirty. Which I guess is Just fine. have a have a different towel. Have like a body towel, like a smaller one oh. to dab and then use your regular and then no. use your regular <laughs> towel. <laughs> bruh, bruh. We went out on Wednesday with our friend oh, Shelby yeah. and we vlogged all of it. So if you guys want to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Guys, it's such it's, a good yeah, vlog. The whole time Kristen was editing, she was like, fuck, I was I wish this was for my regular channel. But it's for our Patreon. So if you want to go so see the good. vlog and see us on our night out, go check out our Patreon. The, I loved vlogging for Patreon because there's oh. like very minimal community guidelines. Yeah, there's still guidelines. I'm I don't mean that so intensely but and we you like, can play music and right. you won't get copywritten you can like smoke on camera and youtube won't block it i can't do any of that on my channel here on youtube so it's just we're a little bit more so much loosey-goosey on patreon yeah and um a lot of our patreon watchers slash listeners said they loved the vlog so we're going to be doing more vlogs on patreon as well so if yeah. you guys want a taste of that go check out our patreon I got a new camera too, which is a lot of fun to bring out. It's a lot smaller than like my big camera. I even feel like, like I'm getting more, yeah, more comfortable and I'm like getting more shots of things that I wouldn't usually get shots of when I'm out. So right. like tequila and mezcal right. and just yeah. taking, just taking shots with the camera. Shots of mezcal are actually really fucking good. That's what is that? Yeah. That's what we had mezcal that one night we oh, went out yeah. before our trip. Yeah. Uh, what were they called? Um, M and M's, M and M's, mezcal, mezcal and, and amaro or something. Am like that. Yeah, amaral, amaral, amaral. I don't know. Is that that's Devin's last? I name. was gonna say. Is <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. I love how you do what I yeah. say. Because <laughs> that's the only way that we know that word. Yeah, is his last name. But I think I it's think also, it a, also a liqueur. Amaro, hmm. amaro, a amaro, amaro, something. Should I look it up? Just pictures of Devin. <laughs> I don't know. That might be only funny to us guys. We have a friend <laughs> named Devin, and his last name's one of these words. Yeah, <laughs> amarello. Oh no, that's a color. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what color is amarello? Yellow. Oh, I was gonna say yellow. Were you only because of yellow at the end? Did you look up M and M shot? Yeah. Did we make these up? And it. Oh, um, mezcal and amaro. Oh. Uh, it's Amaro Montenegro. Amaro Montenegro? Not Devin's last name. <laughs> Got it. Okay. I thought he was like an heir or something huge. We just, we yeah. landed. Oh. A, he's like, what? Hey, well, I get Thanks, guys. We get a cut. <laughs> yeah, really good shot. <laughs> Ow, bonked my head. Oh, careful. I know we don't usually do outfits of the day anymore, but look at my sweater <laughs> and my socks. Yeah, the flame. I didn't know the flames. The flames at the top. It's like yeah. an Argyle sweater. It's from Teddy Fresh. Who else? And then the Argyle goes up to my neck. It's a V-neck sweater and then flames at the top. And then my socks are also flames. Hot fire flames. Teddy Fresh is the coolest brand ever. They are. They're but really cool. They're like unbeatable. Like they really are one of a kind. I was going to say they're all of their items. They're not trendy. They're mm -hmm. so like true to the brand. Yeah. They're still trendy in that they're like cool and unique and they just play with colors and prints like crazy. Yeah. And that's going to be eye catching whether it's trendy or not. Right. And they're just so good at it. And it works. And the quality is really good. This sounds like a brand deal. Wish it was. Yeah. One day. Hey, everybody. Let's put it out <laughs> to the universe. I hope I have a collab. With Teddy Fresh. I don't see why they wouldn't want to work with you. I'm cool. Yeah. And I'm fresh. And you actually wear their stuff. Oh, every day. Literally every day. <laughs> like, I, yeah. Every day. I, this is all I wear. Yeah. So shout out Teddy Fresh. Check it out. 
Okay, so today's episode, I I don't remember how I found this test. I guess it doesn't matter, but I usually like to have some back story behind our creative for these episodes. Um, I sent it to Alex, though, a few weeks ago when I was in L.A. Again, don't know where I got it. Maybe a TikTok, probably a TikTok. But it's a test about the 13 female feminine seduction archetypes. It's a quiz. Mm. So I don't, I don't, we didn't take the quiz or anything. We're going to take it here on screen live for, from, the, from New York. From New York. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> for you guys. And I don't know. It just looked cool. It has the archetypes kind of like the Myers-Briggs. Yeah. Should we read this little intro paragraph? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. What if your past lovers confessed the enigmatic quality that attracted them and held them in thrall? What if your friends, colleagues, and even your enemies divulged how you naturally command attention without even trying? Imagine what you could do with that kind of straight no chaser intel. It would be rare insight into the way the world sees you at your best. It would be a catalyst for embracing the real you. Imagine that. So cool. So the archetypes are like embodiments of how you own your own personality. That's how I had a conversation with my therapist about archetypes. Mm. and But I don't think it had to do with seduction. I think it was like the overarching archetypes. Yeah, yeah. Like um, the Myers-Briggs and yeah, all those other all ones of those. that we've done. So this seems more tailored to the feminine aspect of those archetypes, which is really cool. Yeah, they have some categories. Uh, the maiden, the mother, the queen, the mystic, the huntress, the sage, and the lover. And there's like secondary ones within that, but it also gives famous examples. So some female celebs Ooh. that we can kind of relate to, relate I guess. To, yeah. And see like, I mean, a celeb is having to put themselves out there 24 seven as a brand and as like, yeah, just who they are, their name. And it'll be cool to see who right. we maybe come off as. And you guys watching us every week can tell us if this is accurate and like right I'm also curious to see a lot of you guys say you relate to either me or Kristen if you get one of the same archetypes as one of us and if it like goes with whether or not you relate to us or or me or Kristen and so forth right that'd be cool it says the quiz serves two purposes first it offers insight into the unique way you generate attraction and, and inspire others Secondly, your results help you see yourself in an entirely new light by offering a rare glimpse into the depths of your personality. I love this. I feel like this is almost a form of um, what we kind of talked about in the uh, feminine versus masculine episode Mm -hmm. and like what we embody to feel our most confident selves. Yeah. And I feel like taking a quiz to kind of prove that and give it like a title yeah. Will help us embody it even more so. I feel like once you validating. know. Yeah, it's validating. And once you know more about yourself, you almost embody it even more so because you feel confident in it. Yep. So it's just like it plays into a self, which is really cool. Humans just love taking little tests that tell us more about ourselves. Exactly. Like the hours I used to spend on fucking BuzzFeed. Oh my God. Like which colored pencil are you? <laughs> like tell me and I, I need to know. Right. And, and it would always make sense. And I'll make it true <laughs> even yeah. if it doesn't make sense. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so take this as deep or as shallow as you want but follow along if you want or if not maybe you'll uh, maybe you'll learn something from this. Should we go through and say which ones we think we're going to be? Yeah. Okay, so within the seven di- seven different archetypes, there's also uh, either dominant lover definitions or secondary lover archetypes. Mm. Oh, okay, I see. I wonder what the differences are. Like, what? Why would they be secondary? You know, right? So the queen, for example, the dominant lover archetype is the diva. The secret weapon is your regal presence and glamorous nature and chance. Um, the famous examples are Beyonce, Pamela Churchill, and Isabel Pre- Pressler. And then the secondary is the Empress. And the secret weapon for that is you instinctively make a man feel like a king. Okay, I get it. So- and the famous examples of that are Wallace Simpson, Marjorie Harvey, Madame de P- Pompadour. Pompadour. What do you think the secondary means? So like... It's like not as intense? <laughs> So like a counterpart? Yeah. For for this example, the diva, which is the primary, is like how you embody the queen. But then the secondary, which is 
you making your man feel like a king is like how you exude the archetype the way to be a queen yeah you you show you're a queen in different ways yeah. i get you okay there's three that i think i might fall into okay i don't know which one but i think i'm either gonna be the bohemian the coquette or the enigma and bohemian and coquette are They're both, the huntress yeah the huntress a uh, secret weapon for the bohemian is your independent spirit and sexy devil devil may care attitude is irresistible the coquette secret weapon is your emotional distance drives men to extremes or the enigma your deep introversion and soulfulness mag magnetizes i don't know though that's just like i don't know reading them like i feel like you connect most with those yeah what about you i don't think i'm very elegant the sophisticate so not me the sophisticate is you exude ele elegance, elegance worldliness and, and a touch, touch of mystery. mystery that's like sophia uh richie yes the <laughs> sensualist i feel like i relate to that you are a fount of love affection and robust sensuality yeah. and that's the mother a mother a mother i definitely relate to that one the lady which is the secondary um lover archetype for the mother is you satisfy a man's desire for a nurturing, all-consuming love. So I definitely relate to the mother. Wait, the famous examples for the lady is Aisha Curry. Love e. that. <laughs> and Sandra Lee. That's funny. I think I could also be, I didn't see this one before, the gaming. I was just going to say, I relate to that one as well. Natural charm and playful spirit lovers. Lowers defenses. Lo lowers defenses. Yeah, I really I like I that one. That too. Okay, well, this is what we're going to do. The test is 150 questions, which we didn't realize before going into this. We originally wanted to go through like we've done with other test episodes and like sit there and go through each question with you guys. But that would literally be like a three hour episode because there were a lot of questions, a lot of questions. <laughs> and if we were trying to discuss each and every one, it would be insane. We already went through and took the quiz. We screenshotted some of the questions we feel like maybe have some uh, polarizing answers that we can discuss with you guys. And uh, then we have our results, but we haven't looked at them yet. We screen recorded it, but we haven't looked. So it will be a surprise with you guys. I'm going to get the screenshots of the some of the questions and look at these pictures I saved last night. I was watching. Have you seen the um, David Beckham docuseries? You should watch it. I've seen. Oh, you've seen it? I just started it. I've it, seen uh, clips from it. It, they're so cute. I was literally like, I saved pictures what of them because they're so cute. Look at them. Oh, hot. No, he's so sexy. It's yeah. crazy. One of my, oh, also when we took the quiz, we noticed that they, do we already say this? Our quizzes were out of order. Yeah. The, even if you have the same link, like they, they just randomized the questions. So that was another reason why we couldn't do it on camera with you guys. Right. So this is in no particular order. Okay. This first one. I daydream frequently. My oh. fantasy life is a pleasant retreat from the real world. And I put definitely. I put definitely too. Definitely. I'm such, I find myself like every time I zone out, I daydream. Yeah. But what I've realized within these past few years is I'm like an intentional daydreamer. Mm. And I feel like it's my form of manifestation. Yeah. I fully daydream about future lovers, future careers, future places that I live in. Like, mm -hmm. Everything is about not intention. A intention and like not a fantasy version of my life, but a potential future version of my life. I know for a fact I've done this in the past and now I have what I've Dave J jimped about. Mm -hmm. So like I know it is my form of manifesting. So I it's it's just like, yeah, I knew we I mean, literally ditto. That's exactly how I feel about it, too, and exactly how I do it. And I knew we'd relate on that because we're both Pisces moons. I'm not a Pisces moon, remember? No, you're, you're, you are, you're not a Sag rising. We have the same oh, two first right, right, ones. right, you're, right. You're a Cap rising. Cap rising. But oh, that's very right. Pisces, especially moon, just to like daydream. But like, I don't know, people see it as like aloof and like la la land, but that that's not what Pisces are doing. That's not where Pisces live. Okay. Because you say that, I'm going to read another one of mine. Okay. And it is, I seem aloof, but I'm really just an introvert. And I put definitely... I put like second to last no. Really? Yeah. I don't I don't think I'm introverted. That's why. Right. Yeah. yeah That's are. the only reason why I didn't click really? that. Really? Yeah. But I think are. I do seem aloof. Yeah. I, d I feel <laughs> Maybe aloof I just a lot of the aloof time. <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel aloof specifically in situations where I am like uncomfortable in coming out of my, my shell. So like in social situations. We talked about this the other night. Ooh. <clears throat> the chair just like started... 
It's just wind. It's just wind. I hated that. It's wind. Look, the other one's doing it too. It's heck of stormy outside. Our our, cha- our chairs on our patio are just rocking back and forth. No, 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 no. It's just wind. It's crazy storm. Crazy storm. Um, yes. So when I'm like out in social situations and I know I'm just kind of like sitting there quiet, I could see it from like a out of my body perspective and I know that I just like look like I'm sitting there yeah, like looking around right but my wheels are turning and I just don't feel the need or want to engage in conversation at yeah. that point so I think that's where my aloofness comes in but I never think you're aloof thank you I think you also just like know when I'm just sitting there I was gonna say <laughs> like all these type of quizzes we take we're gonna have such different for each other such different right. like perspectives opinions of it. and perspectives like yeah so it's, it's hard for me to speak on I guess how it comes off but yeah because I know you're I'm, not right. so I know you're just like you're probably just like not thinking about it yeah <laughs> I'm literally just, just like resting there, like, I'm chilling though like half yeah, the time no, when fine. I yeah I'm just I don't just feel resting. like I need to talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one I maybe like I said maybe I am aloof but I don't it's I not don't necessarily because feel, you're introverted. Yeah. Right. I think if I'm aloof, you know what? It's because something else is on my mind. Yeah. That's when I'm like that is when I'm distracted because I'm thinking about like something really intense that's going on in my personal life that I can't like. Just like vomit onto the table. Exactly. Yeah. Like, if, like the, if there's something prominent in my life and I can't express it right then and there because like we're at dinner or something like obvious scenarios where you can't just like, oh, I have this going on. I sit there and I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Like, I can't let it go. I can't push it to the side until I get home. Like, if it's there, it's in the forefront of my mind until I do something about it. I get that. That actually flows perfectly into one of the questions I screenshotted. I solve problems by first seeking to understand them. I arm myself with information. I screenshotted that one too, Kristen. What'd you say? I said definitely. Yeah. I have to psychoanalyze everything a hundred percent i mean we both again this is one of those things like we're gonna have i knew we were gonna have a lot of the same answers for de- for the um the like brain questions yes we were gonna have similar answers and like both always our analytical to, side of us is very similar exactly trying to understand without any bias mm-hmm. and wrap my head I, I yearn to like wrap my head around why I'm in that situation in the first place so that I can learn how to avoid it next time and like just like psychoanalyze everything yeah I said definitely too yeah I tend to look at things I try and look at things from multiple perspectives yep. and understand from each side of it rather than like over analyzing just my thoughts I look at it 360 I I've learned I have to do that 360 or I will just like a snake eating itself my own brain right and that won't do anything no I've looking at it 360 has actually been something I've learned to do to help me rather than just spiraling in my own doom yep when men display weakness or emotional vulnerability I lose interest never never yeah I said never too never that is such I want that yeah that's such a part of human connection when it comes to um, like intimacy for me, mm-hmm. if you're able to break down your walls, then I'm like, oh, okay. Then I'm safe. We're, yeah. There's no judgment here. And no judgment is something I seek in every like human connection that I ever. Platonic, romantic, yep. whatever. It's such a standard for me. And me too. when it's, when those walls are dropped in a romantic situation, I'm like, oh, it's fair game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Another one I screenshotted. I am a rebel at heart. I refuse to conform expectations and I don't need to fit into any group I did uh the second to last on the definitely side so pretty much definitely I relate to this because I never like to be perceived and I mean who does right but like a way I avoid that is like something in particular that comes to mind an example it was a comment on a video like fucking years ago and it still sticks in my head where someone was like, I think in the video I was talking about how I was, I used to cheerlead mm. and they were like, oh, she's one of those girls. And I'm like, no, no, no. Just because I was a cheerleader does not mean you know anything about me. Right. It does not mean I was like the high school baby. Like, no. Jumping to conclusions is something that you like. I fucking hate. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm not a stereotype. I don't right. think I'm a stereotypical person in any sense, really. And 
that's why I like this question. I'm a rebel at heart. I refuse to conform. Like, yes, yes, yes. That's also very Aries. I think for this one, I put in the middle. Neutral? Yeah, neutral, because I didn't feel strongly either way about it. I don't think I'm a rebel. Like, I do love falling into, like, not a stereotype. I think I'm looking at it from, like, a different lens than you are. I like to fall into my comfortability. And wherever that lands, I'm just like, okay, as long as it's comfortable. Yeah. I don't, I don't like push to like rebel by any means. Yeah. Okay. Next one. I'm sensitive to the emotional energy of others being amongst a large group of people zaps my energy and feels overwhelming. Definitely. (laughs) I I saw that one. I was like, I know Alex's answer. Yes. I'm so, and this is something that I've discovered about myself. I think more so in my early adulthood, probably like. 24 25 yeah right during the pandemic I yeah. realized that I really value my alone time to recharge and I love being around the people that I love mm-hmm. but it really does drain me and not in a negative way I think it it I give a lot of my energy to the people around me when I'm in a large group you only have a hundred percent energy and when I'm giving it all out I need that recharge time yeah, that makes sense with your other answer. If generally feeling introverted, like right, you need you need to charge. Yeah, you know my answer on that one. <laughs> never. Yeah, I, I like love a hard it. never. Yeah, yeah. I just I love it. I uh, I've I've learned that about myself is, uh, especially through therapy. Like I feel like the general, at least in the beginning when she didn't know me as well, right? The general advice she'd give me would be like, take time for yourself and da da da. And I still do those things. Don't get me wrong. But I think I took it and I ran with that when Mm -hmm. I was first learning that as like a coping mechanism of just like, you know, self-love and having alone time. And I learned that I was doing it too much. Did it turn to the point of like isolation? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I hate this. And then I realized I'll, I'll never forget the therapy appointment too, where I like broke this down to her. It was after, I think maybe we were hosting people, like we had a weekend or whatever. And she's like, how do you feel like? you know, after having so many people over, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I feel great. Like I feel charged. Mm. And she was like, yeah, that might be, that might be you. Like you might just be one of those people where right. you, you need your people to feel charged. And like, I they totally give do. you energy. Mm-hmm. I give the group energy. Like it, yeah, it is the opposite. I mean, I give the group energy, but it's, it's a constant, like exchange. it charges you. It's like an electric thing. Yeah. Like, literally like, yeah, a, like a wheel. And I think I like it because whenever I'm around our friends, I always am reminded of how fucking cool they are. Yeah. And then I'm like, they're my friends. Like my friends are that cool. Like I'm cool. Yeah. And then it just like keeps (laughs) like, that's, that's why I get so charged. It's like a cycle for you. Yeah. I love it. Next question. It says, when it comes to dating, I most enjoy the hunt. Mm. I said, never. Never. I hate dating. If <laughs> if I have to hunt you or if I have to like do the chasing, I'm already over it. I have a little bit in me that will hunt, but like a little bit little. and then I'm over it. Uh-uh. It's fun for a second, but when I can tell that the other person likes it purely for the hunt and not just to be courted, right. then I'm like, oh, I'm not going to play this game with you. Right. Then it turns into a game. Yeah. I like being courted more than I like to court. Agreed. So I like the chase towards me. Yeah. I will not chase. No. (laughs) I am drawn to ambitious men in positions of power and authority or those who aspire to such positions. I consider myself a confidant and strategic ally. And I said, definitely. My current boyfriend is a manager at where he works. I love when I go into his place of work and I feel like I'm the girlfriend of the manager. I (laughs) I love feeling like that inferior like relationship to him in his workplace specifically it's it's it sounds like opposite but it is very empowering to me like I feel like his sidekick when you win I win yeah thing like when and we say that to each other exactly like if 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 you were this powerful like I'm that I'm powerful powerful because in my head I'm like why would why would you be with me if you if we weren't Exactly. Alike, right. In some type of way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I did I, I, like second to last. I didn't go pure definitely on that, but I did like second to last. S- second to next, definitely, or yes. never, closer to never. Definitely. Definitely. 
right? Yeah, I, I, same exact reason. Yeah, I, I love it. It's so attractive to me. I mean, it's it's very much like the standard I have in my men where I just, I love ambition. And like with ambition usually come, hopefully comes a, a person who's like yearning to get to the top. Yes. Mm, I love it's that shit. It's so hot. I eat it up. It's the oh. hottest shit in the world. This kind of goes with that question. I'm drawn to older, established men with more experience than I. I prefer being the young spirit in the relationship. I said definitely, but I need to elaborate. Um, not like hella older. I'm mm. I'm obviously have never been into like an older, 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 older man. No hate, just not my thing. I've I've actually only ever been, well, I guess technically with two, but like like my recent ex, he was only a few months older than me. And I was even like, I wouldn't even go younger than that. Like really? I, I want my person to be older than me. Yeah. Like I, at least by a it, few years. And like in more life experiences. Yeah. Yep. I get that. I see that in you. Yeah. I said never for that one because of the young spirit. I want to be like the woman in the relationship. I have the urge to be, and it's kind of like what I said in the last one. Like I look at us at the same level. Got it. That's how I like fat, like feed the power in the relationship is being at the same level. I, and I agree. Like I, I want to see us at the same level. That doesn't mean I want to be like, you're a little like, Oh, what do I do? I don't know how to do anything. Cause you're older than me. But that's like, how, like, that's how I interpreted the free spirit, younger self compared to the yeah. older. That's just like, I, how I mean, that's I just interpretation. Yeah. 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 I, I, I didn't see it like that. I see it as like, like, I see that as like a way to ground them. Mm. I guess I'm just going off experience too. Like when someone's so career driven and like, so, you know, like the question said established and blah, 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 like being like, Hey, like come back to earth. Okay. Let me show you something fun. Yeah. Let's go do something fun. Let's go. Like, I like being that. a little like less of the serious part exactly. of life. I see exactly. that. I intuitively perceive complex con concepts but I find it difficult to put my thoughts into words. And I put definitely for this one. And I chose this one because I feel like you're the polar opposite. Yep. Like we both perceive complex concepts. That's a hard That's phrase. A tongue twister. Perceive complex concepts intuitively and like in the same way. Mm -hmm. But I think you put your thoughts into words better than I can. They're all in there. And mm -hmm. I mull over this shit. Like I'll be thinking about all of this stuff and it's going on in my head. But I just don't have conversations with people about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we have the podcast. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, you nailed it. I'm on the other side of that. It's sometimes I even am able to speak things out better than I am feeling them. Whoa. That's crazy. Like, and that's the over intellectualizing problem I have. It's uh. like I'll I can like chat it up, analyze it, like read studies about like psychological trends of children of alcoholics and like I'll get all into like the words and I could talk about it all day but then like my therapist will be like hey what are you feeling about it uh, and I'm like oh uh sad like see I do the I do the polar opposite I like to that example I'll do the research I'll take in all this data and like go through the process of analyzing it in my head and I'm like oh okay that's how I feel about it but I just don't share it <laughs> I guess no that's a good point I guess like we're both still analyzing it but I have to think out loud. Oh, I have to think out loud. Okay. And I've that always been that way. And you're able to think inside your head. Yeah. I can't think inside my head because too I'm already thinking about, I'm, I'm thinking about way too much. No, I can't think <laughs> about all no that space in there. There it's to the brim. <laughs> like I need to buy more storage, but yeah, if I talk it out, then I'm able to kind of start the process. I don't know. We're still trying to learn kind right. of what I do there, but I think out loud. Next one I screenshotted. I preferred tailored classic clothing that makes me look and feel confident. I said no. Hard no. Really? No. When I'm tailored and classic, I and this is just me with my own self-expression, I feel boring as fuck. <laughs> okay. I took that as like. I'm literally in an Argyle less, sweater. <laughs> right. That's classic. But that's but not with tailored. with flames. I, I took that more as, um, like silhouette mm. and I think you like when, when you wear your, um, what is that? The corset things. I feel like that's when you feel, I feel feminine. Yeah. I guess. Okay. It's totally interpretation. It's, of the question. Yeah. I took there's it. also a lot. I will say there's also a lot of other like versions of this question where you feel most confident in what you wear. Mm-hmm. 
And I feel like I related to, I don't know if you felt the same. I, re, I did definitely for a lot of them. I more than one. Yeah. Me too. Me too. This one I just screenshotted. I guess I took it a little more literal. I took it as like the, I literally thought of, I thought of Ted Baker. Right. Like I thought of like a classic tailored, like going to the Derby, like, okay. I, I, I hate that fashion on me. I do not feel good in that fashion at all. No, but there, it's just not our style. Right. And there was another one that said, I forget the wording, but it said like eclectic, eclectic, funky, like, uh, out of the ordinary style. And that was a total definitely for me. Right. I love that. Yeah. This one just not for me, not on me. Love it on others. Like on a Sophia Richie. Fuck. Yeah. Like I love when other people wear it. Right. It just doesn't hit on me. Yeah. I, I interpreted that one as like silhouette. And when I, the form fitting, was that part of this one? Let me double check. I preferred tailored classic clothing that makes me look and feel confident. No, there was a form there fitting was a form one, fitting. like a feminine, maybe I'm, maybe and it I'm said like girly yeah. in quotes. I did definitely for that one as well. I did. I think I did second to last. Of never. never. Okay. Yeah. I think that's one that could, obviously it's based on how you interpret it, but yeah. I feel like for us, it is kind of all over the place because we do like multiple sp- styles. Yes. This one I screenshotted and I relate to it. And I'm going to tell you my answer now is definitely, but the verbiage is a little strong. So don't take just, it so literal. Just don't take it so literal. Okay. My partner must be confident and secure or else he will fall in my shadow. I dominate men. I don't necessarily think I dominate men, but I do think if he's not confident and secure in himself, I will overshadow him. And I'll let him fall into the shadows because I'm not here to build your fucking confidence no, for you. That's no, yeah, that's not my job, and it shouldn't be a job in a relationship. I'm I will like uplift you, of course, and I will uh, like me and my boyfriend hype each other up to no ends. But he needs to feel confident in his own self. Yep. Or foundation. Else, yeah. Or else, I guess I will dominate. <laughs> dominate. Yeah. I said definitely too. Yeah. I mean, look at my last relationship. Right. <laughs> That was the, that was the extreme version of this. Yes. <laughs> this next question, it says, I prioritize my relationships with my partner over my relationships with my best girlfriends. I said, never. This might be like kind of pessimistic of me, but I always think about, I mean, there's so many reasons why I nurture my girlfriends, but like, I never want to like have that type of relationship where like if something happens and I just don't have you don't have any fucking friends left because you went and you dove into a relationship and you don't talk to anybody right we've all seen it I for this one I put in the middle because I didn't like how they said over they did over my relationships over my relationships with my girlfriends now that I'm in this adult relationship I feel like it is a balancing act yeah and it's about finding the like equal like you could equally nurture relationships with your girlfriends and nurture relationships with your significant other a hundred percent agreed I guess me saying no it didn't mean I'm saying I I over girls over the the relationships relationships. I just meant I would never put the man before sure it's going to be a balance yeah it's it's the balance so I put in the middle it also felt balanced for me to put it in the middle. Yeah, this usually when these type of quizzes have like the uh, spectrum answering system, I usually have a lot of neutrals. I didn't have that many in this, surprisingly. Oh, I had a lot of neutrals. I had probably like a handful. Mm. When I am passionately engaged with a project or a person, mm. I forget about my other responsibilities and commitments. And I said always. Yep. I'm tunnel vision deep dive. Yeah. No, especially if it's a, <laughs> if it's a person or like a boy. Yeah. Like I will get into like just prioritizing, especially in the beginning stages of getting to know someone. Like I want to hang out with them all the time and I want to use my time to be on FaceTime and like talk to yes. them. Yeah. I I'm do. We so, do. In that. I'm so like that. It's truly like a um, chasing the thrill and like chasing the fleeting feeling, especially to the point of like a new relationship. I feel like I'm still in that. Like it's that pool that you still feel mm-hmm. in that. And I will forget about everything else. Yeah. But you know, chase what makes you happy. If I forgot about it, clearly it wasn't important. Right. <laughs> it's literally like a call, your tax call. Like, no, that, that's where it Yeah. It depends. Like if like, shit's scheduled, I'm doing I'm it. I'm not going to do that. But like, yeah, I will be a little more like 
lenient the with stuff. Like when we first moved to New York, we prioritized going out and enjoying the city mm-hmm. because it was a fleeting feeling of being in a new city and experiencing new things with your best friend yep. for the first time. And we definitely prioritized that over some things that over we knew needed to get getting done. Getting a coffee table. <laughs> right. We Our apartment was unfurnished for the first six months. It was because, so bad. Let's go out. Spending money on going out rather than getting a couch or a coffee table. Yeah. Don't learn from us. <laughs> no. Next one. I'm so connected to my inner world, thoughts, dreams, and fears that my emotions overwhelm me. I said, definitely. Mm-hmm. I just live up in my head like no other. I figured we'd be on the same page here. 100%. My thoughts are. That's all I got. All I got. <laughs> <laughs> I avoid confrontation (laughs) and competition at all costs. I float above the fray. Absolutely, definitely. You went full deaf? Yeah. Full never. (laughs) That's so funny. So definitely. That's so crazy we're friends. Right? (laughs) I think that's why we're friends. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. But any, like, debacle we've had is around that and, like, me needing to be more gentle and then like right. me being like hey you need to see how you feel and you being like give me a sec like it's a lot of work it's like and i think we're, been... we're finding the middle ground 100 percent. i'm just saying any time that we have had something that's that's it's, always the root of that. it yes because that's where we're so polar, polar opposite. opposite and aries and a virgo let it go literally that's all i say <laughs> yeah i'll let it go later one, once i get my word in yep <laughs> This next one, I screenshotted because it was just so perfect. Preparing meals for others gives me (laughs) tremendous satisfaction. My kitchen is my sanctuary. And I said, definitely. I said, never. I I knew you would. I knew you would. I was actually, when we were taking the quiz, I was going to read that one out loud. I just knew that question was for you. I like, I got excited. Yep, I I knew it. I was like, like, oh, never. (laughs) And like in relationships, like, Mm. oh my God, I love waking up with my man and being like what do you want for breakfast and like immediately going to That's get in the so kitchen funny. and like don't come like you sit or like you you start your morning and I will bring you your shit like only when it comes to food I'm like that like <sighs> I want to be like let me let me feed you something about feeding people is it's like, like a nurture you're nurturing yeah like yeah you you're hungry and this is going to give you energy and like I feel <sighs> like that's very the mother of you the mother the mother I'm yeah. the opposite I, my boy, my <laughs> right, my boyfriend's well versed in the kitchen, and I'm like, ooh, wait on me. He knows how to cook, so I'm like, you do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna fight for it. Or you guys post me. <laughs> just post. Yeah, yeah. As every couple does, but right. like as far as who's the one in the kitchen, it's him. You don't care to do it. No, <laughs> that's okay. You found your balance. Yeah, I don't mind. It doesn't fucking matter. You I don't, don't care. gotta be in there. <laughs> I have no desire to be in the kitchen. <laughs> This next one, this will be the last one that we read. I screenshotted this because this has just been on the forefront of my standards going into, or I guess coming out of my previous long-term relationship. And I feel like we could agree on this one. My ideal partner is independent and allows me to maintain a strong identity outside of the relationship. And I put definitely. Definitely. This was the biggest lesson that I learned from my previous long-term relationship because one of the most like negative parts of that relationship and a big reason why we just weren't for each other was because we got lost in the relationship and we literally morphed into one person And it's just, like I said, it's on the forefront of my standards and it's something that I will never waver from moving forward. Same exact answer. The way I learned that though, and uh, giving credit where credit's due, Scott, he made that a standard for me because he did it. Right. Because I just remember always being so like empowered by him. And like, if I put on like a, you know, an outfit I've never worn before, that's a style that I don't usually do. He's like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, that's cool. Right. Like he was so like, encouraging Uh, encouraging and like would empower like any anything new or me being creative and expressing myself it was never like whoa what are you doing like you never do that it was always like oh sick yeah like run it you want to dye your hair green like go ahead like yeah and that that became a standard for me because it was absolutely it felt so good it's the empowering part of it absolutely okay now for our answers i'm like really nervous yeah yeah i haven't looked at them are we gonna swipe over on 
three. Yeah, we'll click it on three. But so it gives you a breakdown. I know this because I'm sure you saw it too. It gives you a breakdown of the different archetypes and then a percentage of which one. Oh, I didn't it's like that. a breakdown of percentages per archetype. Oh, okay. so it doesn't give you. I maybe it does give you one title, but it does show you what percentage you are of the others as well. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go over our results with you guys now. The results are a little. It's confusing, confusing. if you did, if you take the test. Just, but it's just to maybe try we'll and follow. Yeah, try yeah. and follow. Okay, so um, if your lover archetype is active, meaning you got over seventy percent of it then that activates these secondary archetypes and you're able to find which one you relate to most. Does that make perfectly sense? Yeah, so. okay. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to go down the list of our percentages for you guys. Should we do one by one or should we just go down the list of highest to lowest? Highest to lowest. Okay, so my highest at 78.1% was the mystic. And then the next one with 77.14% was the maiden. At 71.43% is the lover. 66.6% was the huntress. 63.81% was the sage. And then at 48.5% per was the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Little baby, you're a princess. Yeah, that's I'm why. a princess. You're not a queen, you're a princess. Okay, my number one with 83.81% was the lover. Wow. Uh, number two, the maiden. I think that was yours too. Yes. Uh, that was 79.05. Number three, the mother, 69.52. Number four had... Uh, two that were equal oh. like a tide number four is the mystic and the huntress both at 63.81 percent number five is the queen 60.95 and number six is the sage at 54.29 percent wow it's interesting because the huntress for you and the mystic for you were the same number right Yes. And for me, the mystic was my highest and the huntress was my like mid one, my second oh, yeah. to lowest. Yeah. So drastically different for me, but equal for you. I didn't think my lover would be that high. Yeah. I wonder. So after you find your highest one, you then that will identify your secondary archetype, which is what we're going to let you know now. And then since lover was your first archetype, it go it leads you to your second highest, right? Yep. Okay. I'll go first. Yes. So since the lover was my dominant and the maiden was my second, it says that I'm the ingenue. Am I? I hope I'm pronouncing that right, you guys. Spell I, it out. I n g e n u e. Ingenue that sounds right. Ingenue. Whatever. I'm the Marilyn Monroe one. Love that. I told. And you know what's crazy? When I was looking at like when we were saying like which ones we think we'd be, I consciously looked at that and I was like. I wish I was that. Whoa. I literally, I was like, I feel like Leanna's Marilyn Monroe. Like I, that's just so crazy. Right. I, and even honestly reading, like looking at this, like I still don't think I'm anything like that, like her, but who knows? So the maiden was your second. The maiden was my second. That highest. was also my second. So are we the same thing? No, because my first wasn't the lover. Oh, got it. Um, It says that I'm also Rihanna. Hey. <laughs> okay. So since my dominant archetype was the mystic, I am the enigma. Enigma. Like Hollywood icon Greta Garbo was the ultimate enigma. I don't know who Greta Garbo I is. I don't either. Let me look up a picture or see like it's you. Her vibe. She's an early golden era actress. Actress. We we both have actresses. Yeah. She has a melancholic somber persona and her fr her films portray tragic characters and her subtle understated understated performances. You should watch one of her movies. I will. Oh my God, her birthday is September 18th. That's crazy. Wait, will you look up Marilyn Monroe's? June 1st. Gemini. Link's birthday is June 10th. She died August 4th. Your mom's That's birthday. That's my mom's birthday. Mama. <laughs> and then she was reincarnated to my mom and then she raised me. No. Marilyn Monroe oh. and my mom did nothing like. <laughs> well. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Maybe in their dark feminine ways. Yeah. We won't get into that. So no. No. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go into the deep dive of each of our types. It says your your potential to captivate. Mine says <laughs> it could be the wiggle in your walk. 
Yeah. Is it the wiggle in my walk that people yeah. like? Yeah. The impish sparkle in your eyes or the your rock and roll lifestyle. <laughs> Whatever your signature trait may be, your natural unaffected charm makes men swoon. With the magnetic lover as your dominant archetype, you possess an uninhibited sensuality. Your secondary archetype, the maiden, imparts a lifelong ever ever essence. Evanescence. Efference. Effer. Evanescence. Evanescence. Effervence. What is it? Effervence. Let me see. Effervence. Effervescence. Effervescence. <laughs> You're throwing an extra N in there. Effervescence. 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 <laughs> Effervescence. Effer- <laughs> Effervescence. Effervescence. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Effervescence. Effervescence. No. <laughs> Kristen, look at my mouth. <laughs> Effervescence. Effervescence. Yes. Oh, okay. Effervescence. This whole time I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Okay. And receptive spirit. <laughs> Together, the juxtaposition of womanly sex appeal and girlish innocence tantalizes your admirers. What do you think? Let me see. What? I just read it. It's no, I know. I want to read that last sentence. Oh, here, I can read it. Okay. <laughs> Your secondary archetype, the maiden, imparts a lifelong effervescence and receptive spirit. Together, the juxtaposition of womanly sex appeal and girlish innocence tantalizes your admirers. True. I think that's the same thing where you talk about like you still embody like womanhood and your nurturing and mothering side, but you still pull out like the childlike like playfulness of people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see that. Good. I want to be that. Yeah. There you- Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Consider Mel- Marilyn Monroe's voluptuous curves in her signature walk, both a contrast to her breathy baby doll voice and exaggerated naivete. Let me see. Naivety? Yes. Or consider pop star Rihanna's brazen sex appeal with her devil may care attitude. She resembles a rebellious teenage girl, dark, spontaneous, open and liable to do or say anything. In the art of seduction, such a paradox is irresistible. Maiden women are tasked with evolving into the mature aspect of their archetype. You appeal to a man's procreative and per- paternal instincts stimulating both his libido and his inner protector you also give men the emotional spice and unpredictability they crave wow i need someone to confirm this (laughs) who you hitting up Uh (laughs) it also shows you other uh like famous characters that you relate to and in my pop culture is sabrina claudio and on television is phoebe buffet That is so cool, Alex. I could cry. That is so validating. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. That is so fucking cool. Mine is the girl in the seven-year itch. I don't know what that is. Isn't that a baseball movie? No, I'm this thinking seven, seven inning stretch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to dive into my potential to captivate. You project a zen-like, earthy soulfulness that is positively magnetic. Virgo. Uh, Yes. Mm -hmm. At first glance, you may seem aloof or even quirky due to your reclusive, often spiritual personality, but you are neither cold nor narcissistic. Ruled by the mystic archetype, you focus your emotions inward. You crave neither fame nor constant attention. Spiritual fulfillment and inner peace are your highest priorities. You yearn to feel connected to something greater. You don't need validation, attention, competition, or connection to make you feel whole. You may even flee those things for the comfort of solitude. You are, you are content within yourself and that extreme self-possession is your most attractive quality. You are comforting ground grounding energy. You make your lover feel seen and heard in a way that the rest of the world cannot. In her autobiography, my art, my life, Mexican artist Frida Kahlo's description of her lover artist diego rivera an otherwise com- com- comely man 20 years her senior is positively breathtaking it's as if the beauty of his soul overrides any of his corp corporeal corporal these are hard corporate. words 
Corporate flaws. <laughs> <laughs> in spite of their monumental love, Frida and Diego opened an open marriage a long, long before that term even entered the popular vernacular. An extreme example of the enigma's ability to love with a light grip. You oh. keep up. I, I, yeah, I don't relate to that part. I was gonna. Say, I was just gonna ask you if you'd ever be open to that. No, I'm monogamous through and through. <laughs> You keep a part of you just for yourself. A man never feels he has figured you out. Hence, you forever remain an enigma. Into your mystery, a man may fall, hoping to find his redemption in the solution. Wow. Besides that little Frida Kahlo blip, I f- like this is feels fully me. Heard. Heard. Like even me listening to it. I'm like, wow. wow. Yeah. Ooh! And like, I feel confident and that's me. I don't feel confident in mine. Why? Because he, especially hearing yours, yours is so you. Mine I sucks. wish you. No one does it. Mine, yeah, it does. And <laughs> see, you're lying through your teeth. No, I'm not. Guys, a minute. I suck. <laughs> stop. No, I. I, don't I think I yours is you. I don't think it is. You even said you it wish says, that was you. I wish, but it is. It's a test. I don't know. It says voluptuous curves. I'm still okay. thinking about that one. That's super <laughs> literal. It's like the, like, leave what, leave what, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still working on effort vests. <laughs> right. No, yeah, yours is so you. Yeah, this, this does really feel like me. Yeah. The, like, the earthy thing and, like, not finding. The solitude um, in my, like, independence. Yeah, not needing all, like, this other exterior validation. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Good for you. Thank you. Stop. I've, uh, <laughs> I'm fucking with you. Okay. The next category it gives, or excuse me, the next uh, headline like description the subject section it gives is your anti-seductive qualities. Rot row. <laughs> anti-seductive. So, um, so I'm ugly. <laughs> uh, mine says in their child or core state, women influenced by the maiden archetype can be so receptive that they can be mal- mal- malle- malleable. 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 There's no you. Malleable? Whatever. <laughs> and, prone, <gasps> and prone to codependent relationships. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, no, mine, your- mine's just like me. What are you, what are you guys talking about? There's your validation. That's crazy. In the worst way possible. <laughs> like, thanks, fucking BuzzFeed quiz. I know I'm codependent. Okay. With maturity, they learn to assert their identity and desires, and their receptiveness evolves into higher levels of intuition, emotional depth, and creativity. This feminine <laughs> journey will play out again and again in the lives of, of a maiden wo- woman until they evolve. Though some never do. We discuss it at length in the Maiden Masterclass. Okay, so that was just total plug for them. Um, yeah, this is totally, this is very much the past few years of my life. Yeah, I was going to say, and we literally had this conversation on the couch a couple nights ago. Your who, your spirituality, whoever is, just running, the is ship. running the show, <laughs> constantly shows you the lessons that you need to learn until you're forced to learn it. And that's quite literally what that just said. Yep. That's so crazy. And that's what I'm feeling right now. Like you're breaking out of the mold completely and like breaking through and like learning from these codependent relationships in my life, both platonic and romantic mm-hmm. um, over these, these past few years, my intuition has gotten even stronger because of it. And it literally says like levels of intuition will yep, rise if, if I, if I do it, if I do it, you do the work. It says, in their queen state, they can be, what is this word? <laughs> Mer- mercurial? Mer- mercurial? Mercurial. 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 <laughs> Mystical and deeply connected to their emotions. Consider Marilyn's darker side, the private anguish and depression that haunted her off screen. Sick. <laughs> Ironically, that touch of madness added to her allure. The actress never fully learned to cope with her dark side, but most maidens, as they mature, reconcile both aspects of their personality, a breakthrough that usually follows a significant physical or psychological loss. I hate this. (laughs) (laughs) 
Bible. Bible. Until you evolve, your frank sexuality and receptive energy will be a blessing and a curse. (laughs) Fuck no. (laughs) Men will be drawn to your vulnerability and authenticity. Your lack of defenses will put them at ease, but you may be attracted to dark, emotionally unavailable, or even abusive men. And in parentheses, it says, consider Rihanna's relationship with Chris Brown. I've never been hit. I'm just putting that out there. I've never been hit. And you will struggle with boundaries. Sick. Uh, Love addiction and codependent behavior (laughs) is also common with this combination. Regardless of where you are in your journey, your natural sensuality is the essence of your charm. I'm done with this. (laughs) Is that actually the end? It's literally the end. Okay. (laughs) Take the quiz because I feel like it's very true. (laughs) This is crazy. Let's hear it. Okay. Here's my anti-seductive qualities. It's like she's perfect. (laughs) You can do no wrong. No way. Watch. Okay. It's like you might be (laughs) friends with someone like Marilyn Monroe. (laughs) Your deep internal focus can be at odds with developing your full sensuality and creativity. It's particularly hard for you to awaken the naturally magnetic sensual energy of the lover. You may live in your head at the expense of full body consciousness, which also compromises both your sensuality and sexuality. Your self-sufficiency and introverted nature can easily leave you lonely and closed off from deep connection and attraction. You're, you're going to be fine. <laughs> you're going to be just fine, Alex. No, that's true, though, because yes, I and yes. I've talked about this. I think I talked to this probably about a year ago where I struggled with the fine line of my introvertedness and then isolation yeah and that was a big struggle for me and it was a lot of hard work to break out of yep yeah no that's definitely valid accurate very accurate i hated this stop it i hated this because of how true it was and it just sucks it's, to hear. it's it this i uh, like i don't know if it's the quiz or we just happen to like type in all the right answers i i think it was accurate it was I, yeah compl- that's what i'm I saying think, yeah it, i'm but I'm, i will say it like it holds a mirror good or bad yes definitely take this quiz yeah but um don't take it if you don't want to face the facts is what i'm saying in that case take it if you <laughs> right. don't want to face a lot the of facts, people need to, face to fucking wake up and <laughs> face the facts <sighs> i'm just still scrolling through this right now it's just crazy it's just crazy <laughs> it's just crazy accurate i couldn't even read half the words i will i will say you're on the other side of it I think it I think it gave the definition of like what you've struggled through. Yes, that I can relate to. And like thank God you're not still in that place cuz I think then it would be a more Yeah. I don't know. It's Did I not say I hate being perceived? And this is literally what this quiz just did to me. Yeah. It just literally told me everything I already know, but I don't want to hear it right. again. Yeah. I had to live it. Yeah. But now but it's out okay. there for millions of people. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I don't know, read about Marilyn Monroe a little bit more or something. Yeah. And I'm going to watch that actress. Who's Annie Hall? Oh, that she's sounds Annie. familiar. That's mine in film. Oh, whoa. Greta Garbo, that old Hollywood actress, she was quoted saying, I never said I want to be alone. I only said I want to be left alone. There's all the difference. Wow. That like wraps it up for you. I could cry. I like, those are my words. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, it says on television, Kelly Bundy, married with children. I've heard of married with children, but I don't know who that is. Uh, Annie Hall? No, Kelly Bundy is mine. Oh, oh, oh. Married with children. Yeah. Doesn't that sound familiar? It's like a show. It's like an older show, right? Yeah. That and then the girl and this this girl, the seven-year itch. I don't know. Maybe I need to watch that too. She's cute. She looks seductive. She looks like a witch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's like the best part of this quiz. Yeah. All seriousness, I'm still reading this last paragraph of my anti-seductive qualities. And I genuinely am like, what's up? It's talking about Marilyn Monroe and her dark side. And it says, the actress never fully learned to cope with her dark side. But most maidens, as they mature, reconcile both aspects of their personality. A breakthrough that usually follows a significant physical or psychological loss what am I going to lose? Like this scares me. Like, what is it saying? I think I don't understand when I interpret like that in the form of your life. I think it's the relationship you just went through. 
Like, I think that's the loss. I don't think you're like, I don't. Physical loss. Emo- I think it's an emotional loss. And psychological. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's how I interpret it. And, and like to that point, I also had a big breakthrough after my grandma died. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think these breakthroughs are. Go yeah. ahead. Sorry. And that's like what we were saying the other night. I feel like the universe gives me lessons in catastrophic ways only. Right. It's never these like and those little are the breakthroughs boops. that that's talking about is okay. the, the lessons that need to be taught for you to like break your cycles. It feels like your common theme here is like an example, the, the cycle of codependency and you broke through that with your past relationship and my mom. Yeah. <laughs> and that would like, it was, that was a loss that you shed something. I don't yeah. think it means a like a technical loss. See, I'm over here like, Mm-mm. Uh-huh. I think it's a, it's a shedding of something yeah. and you shed something that forced you to learn the lesson of your codependency that I did. Yeah. This is a, this is a great thing. Things I did that, that, that part that part <laughs> wow we wow we I, I like this quiz yeah this is great definitely take it i'm gonna send this to every woman i know yes i think every woman should take this quiz what would happen if a man took it <laughs> it would glitch malfunction oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah we should send it in our group chat yeah absolutely of the girlies we will link the quiz down below for you guys it's a uh, womanlovepower.com love that that's Women love that, power. That com. they do. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all we have for you guys today, though. I'm a, I'm a little drained to say the least. I think yeah. I need to go watch a Marilyn Monroe documentary or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I'm gonna like don't. I'm gonna I don't lean want, into like my dark side. I don't now. want you to deep dive into this, Kristen. I don't want. I'm you, going to. I don't want you to. I'm gonna I don't. Do. I don't think you should. I'm gonna. <laughs> I don't want you to really. T- I don't. Don't take this to heart. <gasps> I'm going to. <laughs> 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 Other, this is not your identity you know what's crazy the other day uh a Marilyn Monroe TikTok was on my TikTok oh yeah maybe I you're was, her reincarnated you think I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I love that smile that you do where you you smile really big but you lower your eyebrow <laughs> <laughs> and I swear you look like a different person <laughs> you know what I mean I do it when I like don't mean happiness behind the smile i mean like it's an ironic smile (laughs) yeah but it's something you do with your eyebrows that i can't i feel like i can't force it no all right guys go take this quiz it's a good so many times it's good it's a good monday morning assignment no it's not (laughs) take it actually it is very monday vibes take it monday get out of the way have a good rest of your week (laughs) If you're listening on uh, Spotify, make sure you rate us five stars, please, and leave us a review. A nice one would be good. We're a little vulnerable, vulnerable right now. Super. Thank you. Um, and if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications. And leave comments. Leave a cute little comment. Be, and be, like boop, it. Boop. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Whatever you're feeling. No. Whatever you're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever mood you're in. Whatever. Yeah, don't let me thumbs on this video. And again, we have a Patreon. So if you want to tune in every Friday, we have exclusive content there. We typically do an episode that pertains to Monday's um, episode or we'll throw in a vlog. We like I said, we did a vlog last week and it seemed like a lot of our Patreon listeners loved it. So we're going to do more vlogs going forward. Absolutely. What should we do? What would she have? What should we have people send in for Patreon this week? I want you guys. I want you guys to take the test. Yeah. Take, please take the test. Let us know what you got. Let us know how you perceived our results. Don't perceive me. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you could perceive me. Perceive our results. And if you think it's accurate to us and because I feel like that's a whole other like third lens that wasn't yeah. taken account of, yeah. it accounted for whatever. And all jokes aside, I, I do trust what you guys have to say because this yeah. isn't just us having a podcast about hoopla like we say some vulnerable shit you guys know us better than some yeah. of the people in our personal lives right so i feel of like the shit we share so you guys have probably calculated your own archetype for us right in general so let's just chat about it chit chat and chat shoot chat shoot shoot, shoot. and as always um if you are on patreon and you didn't necessarily have an answer for monday's episode send in anything that you need advice on and we do yep. general questions as well it's always open mm-hmm. and then um can i shameless plug myself real quick yeah do it thank you very much my name is Kristen, and i have a my own youtube channel and i 
told myself I'm going to be posting once a week consistently on my channel and a TikTok every single day. Love it. I love your little TikTok everyday things. Thank you. Yeah. You benefited from the one yesterday. You got a strawberry. You got a chocolate covered <laughs> strawberry. You got a strawberry. You're like a dog. <laughs> yeah. I gave you a I sent you an idea for another one though. I don't know if I could do that. I could do it with another. Uh, yeah. Not that one. Yeah. Though. But I'm just telling, I got a lens out for ideas. And I love that. Yeah. Thank you. And if you guys, if there's anything specific you guys want to see on my TikTok, please up always open to ideas but I'm feeling very creative and inspired right now and it feels good good and I am gonna go watch Marilyn Monroe no we should watch Vanderpump Ooh, I want Lisa Vanderpump to take this quiz yes do you think we can contact her I think there's ways if there's a will there's way there's will if yeah she would never take us seriously <laughs> She's like, girls, you keep me young. <laughs> I want her to take it really bad. I want a lot of people to take this quiz. Okay, guys. Send, let's send it to our moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom will take it. Yeah, my mom will take it. I'll send it to Monica, too. Okay, yeah. we got to go. All right, love you guys. Love you guys. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.